I now call upon Mr. Sam Messam to give the oration for the honorary fellow, Mr. Dickie Bird. Chief Executive Officer, Provost, Principal and Chair, the Corporation has resolved that the Honorary Fellowship of Bradford College be conferred upon Dickie Bird. Harold Dennis Dickie Bird is a retired English international cricket umpire. Dickie is famous for being able to manage and earn the respect of some of the more volatile players in the game of cricket and for his infectious humour. Dickie Bird, OBE, is one of the nation's most highly respected and much loved sporting personalities. Born Harold Dennis Bird in Barnsley, South Yorkshire in 1933, Dickie gained his famous nickname whilst he was at school. After leaving Rayleigh Secondary Modern School in 1948, age 15, he followed his father, a miner, into the local coal industry, briefly working as a fitter but gave it up, deciding it was not for him. Instead, sport was to be his choice of career. Playing both football and cricket, he signed for Barnsley FC as an inside right. A knee injury at the age 16 prompted him to stop playing football and pursue cricket, as he thought it would give him a longer career. He signed for Barnsley County Cricket Club, where he was opening batsman alongside Jeff Boycott and journalist and chat show host, Michael Parkinson who became a lifelong friend. A staunchly proud Yorkshireman, Dickey made his county championship debut on 16th of May, 1956, where his side Yorkshire beat Scotland by an innings and 145 runs at the Circle in Hull. He played first-class cricket for the next eight years, for Yorkshire County from 1956 to 59, and for Leicestershire between 1959 and 64. Following his retirement as a batsman, Dickey became a coach and ultimately an umpire in 1970. It is, it is his career as umpire that propelled Dickey to become the national treasure he is affectionately considered today. His engaging personality and infectious humour make it impossible to say his name without smiling. An acclaimed and entertaining public speaker, he recalls many anecdotes of his career. The inaugural Cricket World Cup in 1975 saw a pitch invasion by spectators who keenly took clothing from players and the umpires as souvenirs. The following year, on a London bus, Dickie was amused to see the conductor wearing a white hat, just like his own, and inquired from where he had got it. The conductor proudly retold the story of running onto the pitch at the World Cup final and taking the hat straight from the head of Dickie Bird. At his final test match at Lords in 1996, he came out to a guard of honour formed by the playing teams England and India and an emotional standing ovation from the crowd. This was the 66th test match Dickie had umpired, a world record at the time. In 2012, Dickie was recognised for his contribution to the sport when he was awarded an OBE. In 1996, his retirement saw him voted Yorkshireman of the Year having earlier been Yorkshire Personality of the Year in 1977. In 2009, his hometown of Barnsley unveiled a bronze statue of its famous cricketing son. The life-size artwork shows the legendary former umpire raising his index finger to indicate a batsman is out. A famous personality, Dickie has been a guest on Desert Island Disc and appeared on A Question of Sport. Dickie wrote his autobiography, which sold over a million copies, and a sequel, White Cap and Bales, Adventures of a Much-Traveled Umpire, in 1999. He was appointed MBE in 1986 and OBE in 2012 for his services to cricket and charity. He is the patron of the, of the Barnsley Multiple Sclerosis Society and founded the Dickie Bird Foundation to help less fortunate young people to play sport. The foundation offers support for disadvantaged young people under the age of 18 to participate to the best of their ability in the sport of their choice, irrespective of their social circumstances, culture or ethnicity. In 2014, he succeeded Geoffrey Boycott, OBE, as president of the Yorkshire Cricket Club. He says that, in his, he, that never in his wildest dreams did he think that he would become the president of the greatest cricket club in the world and that he was honoured, very humble and proud. In 2015, he returned the honour bestowed on him by funding a player's balcony in Yorkshire County Cricket's home, Eddingley, 
which now proudly carries his name. Dickey, currently serving his second term in office as club president, added, Yorkshire cricket is my life. I watch every match and the team gives me so much pleasure. It is going to be wonderful seeing the players using the new balcony. I do hope my little bit of giving something back will increase their chances of winning back-to-back -back county championships and the possibility of progressing in the 50-over competition. Fellow Yorkshireman, television journalist and broadcaster and Bradford College Fellow, Harry Gration, on hearing that Dickie had been awarded a Bradford College Honorary Fellowship, said, Dickie sums up everything that is special about being a Yorkshireman. I love his sense of humour, his commitment to giving something back to society and the very close friendship we have forged over many years. A man you can rely on and trust and who tells it just as it is. Chief Executive Officer, Provost, Principal and Chair, I present to you Honorary Fellow, Harold Dennis Dickie Bird. I now call upon Mr. Richard Whiteman and Groove Chief, Ex Chief Executive Mr. Andrew Welsh to present the Honorary Fellowship to Mr. Dickie Bird. <laughs> and I will invite Mr. Bird to address our graduates and guests. My Lord Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I can hear you, but I, I, I can't see you. <laughs> it's bad light. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to be here this afternoon. <clears throat> and I'll, I can't, with this gown, it keeps dropping off. And I will start from right the beginning of my career. It's been a long road, and I hope that the students can take a little bit of the advice that I'm going to give them this afternoon. It all started as a young lad with Barnsley Cricket Club, where I opened with a chap called Sir Michael Parkinson, and we had a young lad who was still at school called Geoffrey Boycott. We all played together, we were all youngsters there, and I remember we finished practicing one day and Michael Parkin said to all three of us, he said, I wonder what life holds for us. And it's just amazing that three of us playing together at Barnsley Cricket Club to go on and achieve the ambitions that we choose in life to get to the top. It's just amazing. We're all the son of coal miners. I'm very, very proud of that indeed because my father and mother were so kind to me as a youngster. They always brought me up in the church and made me believe that there was a Lord. And I have so much to be grateful to them for what they did and give me the encouragement the early part of my life to play a sport. If I can say to the students here today, you may have a perfect gift, but the one thing you must have his mental strength, belief in yourself. If you have this belief and say you are going to the top, whatever profession you are in, you will go to the top. You might have all the ability in the world. I've seen so many people, youngsters with so much ability, but have, have fallen by the wayside because they haven't had the will to succeed, the mental strength and the belief in what they're going to do. If you can do that, ladies and gentlemen, young lads, young girls, you go to the top of your profession. I had some happy moments in my cricketing career. And I must mention that I played in an era when there were so many characters in the world. I umpired so many characters in world sport the characters are going out of the sport today, which is very, very sad. You're not going to tell me that a footballer's worth £350,000 a week, which Wayne Rooney is. 
And that doesn't include his spin-offs from advertising and other things. £350,000 a week. I remember my contract at Yorkshire and Leicestershire was £500 a year. <laughs> Never mind a week, a year. By God, our times have changed. But I enjoyed my time, my year in sport. I enjoyed being on the field with some great characters. And there were some great characters. Ian Botham, Alan Lamb, so many. And I were glad, you know, that, that Botham and Alan Lamb retired because always they, all, there was always something that happened in test matches when I was umpiring and they were playing. <laughs> you may have heard the story about the mobile phone. Well, I'll tell you the true story what happened <laughs> with that mobile phone. It was a test match at Old Trafford, England v. Australia, uh, v. Pakistan, sorry. And England won the toss and the bat at first, the first morning of a test match. And England lost two wickets by 12.30. And Alan Lamb came out to bat at number four for England. And he came to my end, the non-striker's end, where I was stood. And I said, what are you doing here? I said, get to that end, let me give you guard. He said, I want you. I said, what do you want, man, we're in the middle of a test match? He said, I want you to keep my mobile phone in your pocket. <laughs> I said, you walk in the middle of a test match. He said, I'm expecting a call at, three, at 20 to 3. I've got a bet in the 2.30 race, he said. <laughs> and I, I want to know what happens. I said, that'll not be here at 3.30, at 20 to 3, I said. But anyway, he batted till lunch, and he came after lunch. And at, at 20 to 3, Lammy's phone is in my pocket. I said, poor oh, man, we're in the middle of a test match. He said, well, answer it. I said, answer it, we'll all get shot. We'll all get sacked. He said, answer it. Wacky Yunus was there, the Pakistan fast ball. He said, what are going on? What are going on? He was rambling. Oh, what are we going on? I said, I don't know what's happening. I said, phone's in my pocket. Let me say, answer the damn phone. I said, hello. <laughs> Who's there? This is Ian Botham ringing from the dressing room. I said, what do you want, man? He said, tell Lammy, tell Lammy his horse has rung last. <laughs> Can you see that happening today in a test match? But there were so many characters. They enjoyed the game. They knew they could win. There were so many characters. I remember in the county match, uh, Somerset were playing Northamptonshire. Both of them was playing for Somerset, and Lammy was playing for... Northamptonshire. The match finished. We all came off the field and they shook hands with me. All the best, Dicky. Both, both of them said to me, he said, have a good journey home. I thought they're, they're up to something. <laughs> I had my shower, got bath and went into the car park. And when I saw my car, I couldn't believe it. They took the wheels off it. <laughs> it was jacked up. And there was a notice on the front of this screen, on the windscreen. All the best, Dicky. Have a good journey home. <laughs> I were glad when they retired, no. <laughs> but as the uh, introduction to me, as Sam said, yes, becoming president of Yorkshire County Cricket Club is probably one, one of the greatest honours and the pinnacle of my career. Never in my wildest great dreams that I would become president of Yorkshire County Cricket Club. As a young kid of 16 years of age, walking those, through those gates at Edinley, walking through those gates, I was so proud as a 16-year-old lad to have my first practices for Yorkshire. I never thought that one day I would become president of the greatest county cricket club in the world. I remember I'm name dropping now, Dom, Sir Donald Bradman. I had lunch with him when I was umpiring a test match in Adelaide. He invited me to have lunch with him. And during lunch, he said to me, Dickie, he said, the greatest club in the world, Yorkshire County Cricket Club. 
And when to th when I thought I never forgot those words, and to think that I have become the great uh, that I've become the, the president of this great club, tremendous honour, and it means so much to me. We have a great side at Yorkshire, a great side. We've got seven test calls now at the moment in the test side, and I think we'll have seven or eighty of our lads play for England next summer. But they've got a marvellous academy. We've got some wonderful coaches. And these lads, young kids, have come through, great play, fine young players, believe in themselves, mental strength. And they've, they've, they've come and they've stood up to the line. They've played magnificent. And to win the county championship two years on the trot, back to back, and I, it's, during my term as president, I feel very thrilled, delighted, and very honoured indeed. I'd like to, if I may now, just to say to all the students, I wish you all the best in your profession, whatever you choose, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you choose in your profession. Work hard, believe in yourselves. Please, I know I'm stressing that, mental strength. If you believe in yourselves and say you're going to do it, you'll conquer the world. If you've got, if you haven't got this mental strength and belief, you will fall by the wayside. As I've said, I've seen so many fall by the wayside. But if you do all these things that I've said this afternoon, I feel sure that you're gone and you make a tremendous success of your profession. Bradford means so much to me. I've got some wonderful, wonderful memories. I got my highest score in first class cricket, 181 not out against Glamorgan. In fact, I batted through the innings. We won by an innings. Freddie Truman bowled them out twice. And I thought to myself, I came off the field, and I thought, well, surely they'll pick me the next three matches, 181 not out. I mean, to get 181, well, I, 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 as I say, I was on the, on the field the, all three days, four days, sorry, in the batting, and, and I was in the field, fielding. Anyway, I felt so chuffed, come off the field, and Brian Sellers, Sellers, who was the chairman of this lot, this 43, who were on the selection committee, 40, 43, and Sellers said to me, well, birdie, lad, he said, that's played well, but we've dropped the, the next match. <laughs> My old world fell in. That's Yorkshire. And I said to Mr. Sellers, well, Mr. Sellers, I said, I'm delighted and honoured to be part of this great Yorkshire squad. But surely it didn't, it didn't take 43 of you to drop me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much. You don't want to hear me spouting all day. I'd like to thank Bradford College most sincerely for bestowing this great honour upon me. I shall treasure this. Excuse me, I have a lump in my throat now. I shall treasure this for the rest of my life because it's indeed a great pleasure and a great honour and I shall appreciate this as long as give me the good Lord. Yeah. Give me breath. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.